Hi guys, welcome to Hype Train. Today we've got a geography now for you. This one's Greece, which I know a lot of people have been asking for. In the past. We haven't done one for ages, haven't we? for ages, no. It's like an eternity. I don't know, it seems to be barbs actually makes them all longer now. They're like half an hour long, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of about half an hour long and there's lots of different information in them. Yeah, so. a lot of information, so yeah. you can see why they're probably longer. Mm. But no, if you've got any other recommendations for what you prefer to react to in regards to geography now, I'll, I'll leave a link to the playlist up there. We've done quite a few, haven't we? So we have done quite a lot. So yeah, you'll find there's a lot on our channel. We, we have covered quite a lot of places, but possibly not where you want us to check, so. No, and I'm waiting for him to cover England. Or yeah. United Kingdom, because yeah. it might tell us stuff that we didn't even know. That's, that's that'll be it's pretty interesting, interesting stuff, ain't it? But uh, anyway, we've got Greece. Yeah, we'll go for it. Yeah, yeah, let's have a watch. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, 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 you're the one that I want. Greece. You get my reference, right? You get it? I'm so clever, right? Do you get my reference? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> That was it's unique, what? <laughs> now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Now let's find out how it all went down. So, let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Now, despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we already talked about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized cool. countries in the world. Well, I, I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant oh, marine oh, fleet oh, after oh, Japan. And at any I given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over yeah. 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Wow. Even the ones that are yeah. like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros, or Kanachale, and Tenedos, or Botsjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. It's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city oh. of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through. Oh, After yes. independence from the Did Ottoman times, ship Greece was stuck very there intent on making sure oh, that they that, 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 that was there. Yeah. This has historically be. led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula is called Halkidiki and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of uh, only about 2,000, Mount Athos oh, wow. or Holy like Mountain is interesting because it's an oh. isolated Ooh. monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted, you have to have a special permit, and you have to Fair be a enough. dude. No women allowed. Although historically oh, right. some women have either accidentally or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest Aha, cities are, of course, brilliant. Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros <laughs> and Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient oh, world. Yeah. Cardia once uh, tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque cliffside white oh, marble yeah. villas. Oh, and Patmos, the incredibly significant uh, religious site abroad. in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Mm. Speaking of which, Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world, only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites. Now, we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot. Like France, more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now, we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries, the Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots, the sculpted whoa, base whoa, of the shore of yeah. Nice, the Chios former leper colony buildings, the Palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below. And share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country. 
the land. There's so much info there. There was. It's crazy. It's Greek saying. Yeah. When God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. Uh, <laughs> I kind of paraphrase that a little bit. Don't quote me on it. Too late. It's a quote now. Now, <laughs> Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting job. I can't job. believe you've so much money on business people. The on the West Bank. I don't care about the West Bank. Talk about me. Talk about the rock. First of all, the country's about 80% mountainous <laughs> on both the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, oh, you find Mount yeah. Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, oh. known for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Uh, yeah, now, with the exception so. of small boats mm. and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest river, oh. Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south-central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies on two major tectonic plate zones, ah, the North Anatolian oh. Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This that means that tall. although yeah. free winds, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea, or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 <laughs> days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece, and they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes <laughs> like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic classic Greek salad, pita mm. with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which half of the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes <laughs> about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature mm. would be places like the Vikos Gorge, the Sami no. Cave in Cephalonia, no. the Siri E Kalter Blue-Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and oh. so much more. Oh. In a nutshell, Greece Crazy. is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm oh. of murder. Merchant ships yeah. and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, on to the next. Yep, the springs, the cool. waterfalls, the sights, the seeings. Lovely place. Well, yeah, there's been a couple of minutes there where it's just gone on with sights and places to go. And you could go in but depth more then. Would yeah, they, they literally would make a, a film on them, couldn't they? They're just some fantastic looking places. Winston Churchill once said, Greeks don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. Okay. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country at about 93% are made up of ethnic <laughs> Greeks and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. Oh. They use the Type C and F plug outlets, they use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro they used the Drachma, which was the oldest mm. consistently used currency in the that world, and they drive wow. the Now, pretty much Drachma. anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail, but in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, well, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? Then there was classical Greece, <laughs> Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to oh. Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. And eh, the Shang Dynasty. And eh, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, yeah, Definitely a lot of myth from gods. Philosophers, go games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the 
the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geography peeps, or as I like to call you, geography Greeks, have told me that the movie <laughs> My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical huh? Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. I'll say that. You say that? No, I had some that one. You do not talk Pop back to. Click. There's always like a All weird right. grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka, everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful, warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, <laughs> in Greece, voting is required by law, as is conscription for men ages 16. Yeah, that's right, 16. They get them while they're young. Up to 45 <laughs> for a minimum of nine months in service. Many people celebrate name day instead of their birthdays, in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save oh. space, many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes okay. are incredibly rare, as most Greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere. You'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins, and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys <laughs> smoking while playing backgammon. There's always mm. old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx of women, like a lot. Somewhere around 60 to 65% of the population is female. This may or may not be the reason why Greece is also the world's most... How can I put this in a non-crude and vulgar <laughs> phrase? <laughs> Uh, Greece is the most hey hey active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil! <laughs> Interestingly enough, Greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, back in 2001, God, Greece joined the EU. Long story short, was, they misrepresented yeah. their financial statements, they entered an IMF and ECB memorandum, and now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, back in my day. Yeah, back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the <laughs> highest unemployment rate in the EU as well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, no, the no, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot. Concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would Pretty probably include most of the stuff we do in life. Yeah. Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Alexander no. the Great. No! No! Yes! Yes! I'm gonna he, he, he is Greek! Greek. Yes, he, he is! is. Modern contemporaries <laughs> like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samara, oh, Giorgio Karayunas, <laughs> yeah, Konstantinos Mitrovic, yeah. this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen oh. Sophia of Spain, and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. <laughs> Greece is really old, like, Whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be Orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted <laughs> certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan, South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, huh. there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make 
sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no-no. <laughs> when it comes to the best friend though, almost every Geogra Greek told me Cyprus. <laughs> Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love yeah. their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is today you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. <laughs> by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned, Grenada is coming up next. Grenada, yeah, so many countries. Uh, but yeah, I want to go to Greece. Oh, I've been to Corfu. <laughs> They look beautiful, don't they? So many places to see. The, the monks sort of places now. Oh. It could have gone on for, a, you know, even just a short bit would have been five or ten minutes, wouldn't it? And it's just like five seconds and it's not the next thing. So yeah, seeing it out to sea just, wouldn't have quite been the same, would it? You actually want to go in and visit it, wouldn't you? It looks so great. Well, there were some beautiful looking places there, yeah. And hats off really? to the lady that actually dressed like the bloke to get in there. <laughs> Can't remember who that was now. There's so much information for you. That on my oh, mind's minute. boggled. Yeah, um, quite a while ago, wasn't it? It was. Um, maybe you've got some other stuff you want. As always, what whack down below that weren't mentioned by Barbie. Or maybe some stuff was wrong. Heaven forbid. I would like, um, yes, we do know Prince Philip has now passed away. Yes, RIP. But obviously this was recorded a good few years ago. So. Yeah. Uh, we are well aware of that one. Um, but no, uh, like I said, whack anything else down below. I don't think I need to say much more. Apart from the fact, I do actually want to go to Greece properly. Mainland Greece, you? That was very tempting, yeah. Oh, I would love to see some of beautiful places. So. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely up there as well. The yeah. Better ones, isn't Hopefully it? Hopefully so. soon, yeah. Yes, bad times out there. But no, um, I think we'll leave that one there. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you all soon. Catch you on the flip side.